Hello, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me? If you can, can you please reply on the comments? Hello, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, Kimberly. All right, so we shall start the session. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Miss Yao, the pharmacist from NSCMH Medical Center. And thank you for all of you. I mean, thank you for all the viewers. This is our fifth Facebook live session. So today, we are going to talk about facts and myths of gastric pains. Sorry, because of the braces, you may not hear me very clearly. So we are very happy and very proud to have Dr. Mahan Devon today, as he will be sharing his insight about this matter with us today. Therefore, if you enjoy the show and if you think this show will be beneficial to your friends and family, please like and share our Facebook Live. If you have any questions, you can leave your message at the comments now. Later on, after the presentations, Dr. Maha is going to have a question Q&A session with all of you. I have to give you some suspense. So today we are going to do something very different today. So please stay tuned. Before we start, uh, I'd like to introduce Dr. Maha in a very special way. Hi, Nan Ungel. Let's welcome Dr. Maha. Hi, Dr. Maha. Hello. I cannot see your face yet. Really? Yeah. Do you hear what I say? I say you're very handsome just now. <laughs> yes, I heard, I heard. <laughs> How to... I think you mute me, is it? Uh, no, let me have a look. Um, the video? I think you're showing the press the, the video now. Ah, we have our handsome money doctor now. So I'll <laughs> let you take over from now, Dr. Maha. Thank you very much. Hi, hi. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Xiao. Um, you learn uh, Tamil quite fast uh, in one day, I guess. Um, Guys, I saw many uh, of my friends who are uh, joining us. Um, thanks for joining, guys. It's been a wonderful uh, MCO. We didn't meet each other. Many of us are hiding in our homes. So this is part of our CSR project to educate public on um, something that I know. And that's uh, just to educate. I think this is going to be a norm rather than going for some big conferences. We're going to sit down in a room like this uh, with me and then uh, sharing. So today's talk, I'm not gonna talk about any COVID-19. Uh, I'm not expert in uh, COVID-19. So we're gonna talk about something more common, uh, something which is uh, close to me, um, which is gastric pain. Uh, so my aim for today is very easy. Uh, if I can get everyone of the audience understand, what is this gastric pain? Because I have patients come and tell, I got gastric problem, I got gastric problem. So I just want to make sure we understand what we 
uh, what is gastric problem or what is gastric pain as a patient says it and from the doctor's point of view what i understand by gastric pain so um i think um before we start you can see all the heart shape and also the likes please press it down there please press it and uh, so that uh, the more likes we get um Siao is going to ask me to do it again next week, I think. So let's go for it and uh, feel free to ask questions. I'm doing this for the first time, so I can't be reading most of the um, questions there. So I got one assistant right beside me, uh, my son, reading all the comments and showing me in the things. And uh, whether it's a fact or not, he's going to show like this. Okay, so um, let's start uh, from the thing that we know that we talk about gastric uh, problem. So when the patient comes to me, most of the time they say I got this pain, uh, stomach pain. And then um, and I, I don't know what to do. I got stomach pain. And most of them use a lot of words, a lot of words. I think can my audience here give some of the words that you use uh, um, to describe this pain. If you can share with me what are the words that you use. Um, Say like um, I was uh, trying to learn Chinese just now with uh, my nurse Christine. So when a Chinese patient comes in, uh, they come and tell I got uh, Wei Tong. I got Wei Tong, uh, some gastric problem. Then you got another word. Uh, I I hope I'm pronouncing correctly. If it's wrong, please comment to Christine, my nurse who taught me this Chinese uh, for last one hour. Another word they call is uh, Chang Fong. Chang Fong. Um, which is bloatedness, um, Wei Swan Tao Liu, reflux, uh, Tu Zhe Tong. Uh, see, there are the words when I hear from Chinese patients uh, when they come to me. They describe the same thing, stomach pain. This is in a medical term, it's called dyspepsia. And when we have a Malay patient, um, they come with a lot of uh, uh, terms like um, Parit Huru Hati La, uh, Angin. Uh, gastric, sadder masala gastric, sarai, sarai so kembung doktor, kembung, pedih, uh, bila makan tu pedih, ada rasa macam pahit dekat mulut. So all these are same words describing a lot of, uh, oh, somebody said heart burning, uh, stomach cramp, that's good. Uh, some of the people are sharing their thoughts. Uh, bloated stomach, Pani uh, told is bloated stomach, yeah, in Tamil, Patients use another set of words. So in Malaysia, if you write down one list of things we describe this dyspepsia, which is called stomach pain, uh, which is normally people thought I got gastric, is kate in Tamil, they say ninji karikide, uh, ninji karikide. Uh, in Tamil also they use gastric. Gastric word seem to be very universal. Chinese patient knows the word, uh, Malay patient knows the word. Indian patient also knows the word, I got gastric problem. And the gastric problems are, uh, they'll tell in Tamil. Kaste, kasaparake, all these things, a lot of words. So what we are here today is to know that um, we need to understand that when we say you got this problem, uh, whether you have heartburn or you have a reflux, you feel bloated, there can be many symptoms, but the, it is all an, uh, terms used, but uh, the specific diagnosis can be different. So I'm going to share some of the common ones. So before we start, let's just go through and see what is this stomach do, okay? The stomach basically is a, what they uh, call a storage uh, thing. If you see, this is a picture, but I have a model here. Can you see here? Ah, this is a model. Okay, this is a model. Uh, I hope I'm, it's a mirror image. So it's a model. So it's a storage, it's a temporary storage um, um, place, reservoir for the food. So that's one. And uh, number two, uh, it mixes the food huh? and uh, the acid is released. It mixes the food. Uh, if you can imagine uh, the concrete uh, mixer, you know, the concrete mixer which goes around and you can see the concrete mix continuously. Huh? And at the point of time when they reach the con uh, construction site, the thing is poured uh, into the uh, small bowel. So similarly, it mixes and make the bowel easy to digest. So that is uh, basically what's the function of uh, and stomach. So that is stomach. Okay. So let's go to what is the common thing that we think about. This is the place 
where called junction of the stomach, where the food going to enter. If you can see, I show you to in my model. I got a beautiful model here. Yes. Okay. So, so you can see this part here. Yeah, this part here. This is what we call cardioesophageal junction. The food enters from esophagus. All right. And then, if you can see this slide here, this is how it look like from the uh, endoscopic view. And um, the food enters here. So this is the major cause of problem nowadays with the uh, fast food coming up, with the food that we are eating outside, all these uh, things that we are doing, lifestyle problem, we call gastroesophageal reflux uh, you know, disease, all happens at this junction. Let me show you again. Huh? Yes, yeah, this is the junction. So this is the main thing that we're going to discuss about while doing that please like our page uh, i put here please like our page uh, this is our hospital page i do have my own page like this uh, quite beautifully done by myself um, so please like it both the pages and um, this is the first thing that i want to talk about is it a fact or is it a myth uh, smoking causes stomach ache sometimes i get a patient say i'm a smoker i know i can get lung problem i don't think I can get stomach problem from uh, smoking. So smoking can cause um, stomach problem. Uh, so this is, will be a fact. So um, what is the smoking does is it can cause direct uh, problem, which is uh, uh, increases uh, the acid production by the caf uh, nicotine, which is a uh, half in the thing, and also can cause thinning of the protective layer. And at the same time, remember I told you the junction? Yeah, the junction here. Yes, the junction uh, relaxes with nicotine and easy for the stomach to go to. So this is one of the things which is, uh, um, I would say, uh, smoking. How does this smoking causes the relaxation of the muscle and cause the food to reflux up? So let's see whether anybody asks any question. Poking pain, mencucuk dalam perut, nausea. Yes, that is some of the things doing. Yes, uh, Yunshan is watching, Jagan is watching. Let's go to the next uh, thing. Does alcohol cause stomach pain? Yes, alcohol does cause uh, uh, stomach uh, problem because alcohol directly will injure the mucosal layer by thinning it out and increase the acidity. And also uh, intoxication, it relaxes the uh, sphincter and causes you to throw up and uh, you vomit and uh, all these things. And um, we got a question here. I have gastric problem. Can I eat fat-free yogurt and strawberry? That's one of the questions, fat-free yogurt. We're coming to that uh, uh, after this uh, next slide. So traditional medicine, another thing. A lot of us, uh, whether you are Chinese, Malay, Indian, everybody takes Chinese uh, traditional medicine. It doesn't matter, everybody takes. So, most of the time, traditional medicine is a food supplement, but uh, you must understand some of it uh, are not proof toxicology wise. What is a component of this uh, root? What's the component of the leaf? What is the component of the juice? Some of it may have steroid uh, mixed with it. Uh, uh, I call naturally producing steroid, like say in the uh, uh, roots. So it can cause thinning of the muscle layer, which is inside here, if you see closely. Uh, the inside, uh, it thin the layers inside and uh, can cause ulcers at the same time, can cause a lot of other problems. So be careful when you take a traditional medicine, it can cause uh, um, stomach problem. And this is a fact. Okay, so um, next we answer the question before we go uh, is um, how does a uh, yogurt, uh, fat free yogurt, strawberry, I have gastric. Uh, I have always asked the question by a lot of my reflux patients, can I drink milk uh, if I have reflux? So I always uh, advise my patient that um, drinking milk is good for health. Uh, but those who have this kind of problem, which is hiatus hernia, if you can see closely, on the left-hand side is a normal stomach. On the right-hand side is a stomach which is pulled upward. So your hiatus is loose, so the part of the stomach is pulled up. So makes the food 
and uh, the content of your stomach comes up easily. So this is uh, one of the uh, reasons that you get reflux. So what happens when you drink milk? Uh, milk actually gives very good uh, feeling when you drink, especially when you drink a cold milk. Sometimes you, uh, you feel very good, cold and nice. But uh, milk actually re reduces the stomach emptying. Remember, once it enters here, it slows down. So it stays in the stomach for a very long time. That's why you feel very good about drinking milk. You feel full. And it stays inside here for a very long time before going down. So when you keep it long here, your stomach will eventually try to digest, try to mix it with more acid uh, over time. So if you drink milk at night and you have hiatus hernia like this, uh, which is uh, kept open, uh, um, especially grade uh, C and D type of uh, esophagitis. So when you have milk in the stomach and then you lie down at night sleeping, you're going to stay long. And when you lie down, more acid will come out and irritate. So that's why we get patients who say that they get pain middle of the night, they wake up uh, of a heartburn, uh, very painful after things. So you need to ask yourself, what did you eat? Uh, or what, what did you do before you sleep? I always ask you, drink milk uh, before you sleep. So, um, Kimberly is online. Hi, Kimberly. Um, so, this is how the reflux happens. So, if you have a very good uh, uh, stomach tight on top, so you won't have reflux easily. So, that's why every patient uh, will have this kind of um, uh, issues, reflux. Even normal people can get reflux that called transient opening, which happens in anybody. And um, those who are having hiatus hernia, which is on the right hand side, uh, they are more uh, prone for reflux. And um, let's see whether anybody else. Poking pain, pain. Yes, so. Um, this is the same thing about the reflux. And um, let's go to the next one. Yeah, esophagitis. So when you come with reflux, we go and do scope. And um, during the scope, we're going to find a lot of uh, um, injuries near the junction. You can see close up. You can see how uh, badly injured when you have a reflux. This is almost a grade, uh, LA grade D, uh, very bad reflux. And nowadays, this is a new disease which we call, uh, call it uh, reflux-related uh, uh, problems. And um, over time, we are seeing more people are developing cancer of the junction due to uh, prolonged uh, reflux and causing this kind of ulcer and erosion. And um, this is one of the uh, not so uh, bad um, esophagitis, but this is already treated. You can see they still have a little bit of cracking, but it's all healed. And um, also can see this one a bit more better after uh, treatment. You can see this is a view uh, with NBI. And um, so this is NBI view. So don't be scared. The blue color, what you're seeing here is just a different lighting that we use when we scope. We remove the red, uh, red light from the um, white light to make the blood vessels more prominent when we see, so we can see the pattern of the vessels better. And um, this is how the thing can uh, progress. Uh, we use, initially, it'll be just a little bit of inflammation. Then you have some uh, narrowing happen. Then you have ulcer formation just above it. And all this one, uh, this will be... Uh, causing problems. So hope uh, we are keep watching it. And um, let me see whether there's any any uh, questions. Uh, somebody say, can't hear me. Oh, Dato Hon is there. Dato, can you hear me now? Yes. So let me repeat. Reflux is a new age uh, disease. Um, it causes the cancer of junction, uh, cardiacophageal junction is the fastest growing cancer in the world now. And um, no doubt we need to protect that area and um, make sure this is uh, done. So again, just a reminder, those who haven't liked our page, Facebook page, 
please like them and um, so that you can follow the next uh, talk as uh, usual. This is my page and um, okay. Does weight reduction reduces reflux? So this is another uh, question that uh, you should. So let me think whether this is a myth or this is a fact. This is a fact, okay, fact. So if you look at um, gaining weight and um, losing weight, many of us, uh, those who are bigger size, uh, they also have a reflux problem worse because of dilatation of the junction uh, at the hiatus and easy for the stomach to be prolapsed. And also other things like uh, fatty liver itself. Uh, when you are big size, your liver gets bigger and then uh, your liver stretches and cause a lot of uh, um, problem. And uh, this induces uh, reflux. So some of my patients who are overweight and when they lose about even two to three kilos, they can see they have a better control of this reflux compared to when they're overweight. So I do suggest exercise, it's already proven. Uh, exercise, weight reduction um, uh, reduces a lot of reflux symptom. And uh, some of the breathing exercise like yoga also reduces uh, some of the symptoms. And um, I think um, Maniam Nalantambi is having pain uh, middle of the night, just like how I explained. Uh, this may be due to um, the reflux happening after you're lying down. So surely you need a scope for that. And uh, let's go to the next myth. If you have any other um, uh, question that you want to ask, like uh, something that you, you want to clarify. Can a poor muscle tone, obesity, good post, poor posture cause reflux problem? Yes, this is what we're talking about. Uh, Jay Lashmi, uh, poor muscle tone, obesity are one of the factors which are going to make the um, reflux worse. So losing weight is one of the good things. And um, welcome, Alex Tan. I'm looking, reading some of the question in case I miss. Yeah, Kalida asks, those with lactose intolerance, can anything can be done uh, rather than not taking the milk product? So yeah, we do have patients who come and tell that um, I have lactose intolerance. So it need to be really diagnosed whether you really have a, a lack of the enzymes. So nowadays we have tablet, uh, uh, lactamase tablet, which can be used. Uh, so we use this tablet. Those who have lactose uh, intolerance, uh, I give these patients uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes before their meal, take these uh, two tablets and they can uh, consume uh, daily products uh, without much of the disturbance in their GI. So let's see any other questions which uh, thing. Um, does diabetic patients uh, tend to have reflux upon taking uh, related medication? Yes, uh, this is a very um, um, complex topic. When you talk about diabetic patient and reflux, it's a complex topic because number one, um, poorly controlled diabetic itself uh, will cause uh, a lot of issue. They have uh, their nerve, which is, won't be that uh, good uh, due to the high sugar content. So they have micro uh, vascular complications, which uh, involves the nerve. So your bowel generally won't be moving well. So you, they have this motility syndromes. And at the same time, many of these patients who are having a diabetic uh, will have uh, a lot of other uh, problems as well, like heart problems. So many of them will be started on uh, antacids like aspirin. So they are prone for uh, stomach uh, related uh, problem. So my advice is if you are diabetic, make sure it's within the range, control it so tight so that you don't develop uh, microvascular complication which uh, involve the gut and also autonomic complication which involve the gut. So there's a lot of issues in uh, diabetic and uh, gut uh, dysmotility. Okay, so let's see any other questions. Um, um, Mr. Tio is watching as well. Thank you, Mr. Tio. And um, take milk or so, yeah. If I get gastric, I think we answered the question. Um, does coffee and tea triggers reflux? Ah, yoga, uh, my friend. Uh, Johan asked a very interesting question. In fact, I, I put in one of the things to answer, but uh, 
let me answer that. Does coffee and uh, tea uh, triggers reflux? Yes, uh, it does uh, matter. And um, how does it uh, happen is that um, coffee, when you, when you say um, uh, you have two components of it, generally the coffee itself has a caffeine which uh, increases acid production in the stomach, which is going to cause uh, thinning of your protective layer and uh, may cause injury. And uh, another thing is uh, it also relaxes the junction, which I told uh, here, uh, and uh, make your reflux worse. So um, how are you going to uh, control? Because many of us are coffee drinkers. I drink a lot of coffee and I do have reflux, but uh, you need to know how to manage. Not uh, So some people um, cut down their number of coffees per day. Uh, some people change the type of coffee because like say cold brew coffee have uh, less acidity uh, compared to hot brew coffee. So you can cold brew it, then heat it up and uh, drink, uh, reduces about 66% of the acidity. And uh, also uh, drinking uh, coffee. Um, some of the reports say that Highland, uh, from the Highland coffees have high acid uh, content as well. So all these things you can try, but I'm telling you, this is all personalized. Uh, if you think, um, uh, this uh, shop's coffee is, uh, I, I, I cannot mention him, say the A shop coffee is uh, not uh, giving me problem. Then you bring the coffee from uh, the A shop and say you go to another shop and that coffee. So maybe uh, the type of coffee they use is different and then the concentration they use is different. So it does trigger it depending on the amount and also what is the problem you have. If you have a very bad hiatus, you don't cause problems. Any, any any other issues here? So those who have reflux, I, I put a picture just now. I have um, um, okay. So those who have a uh, hiatus, uh, these are the surgeries we do. Huh? We tighten the thing. Those who are cannot, no matter how much medicine we give, you cannot um, make it tight. You cannot make it tight, you cannot um, um, treat with medicine, then you may need to think of uh, tightening it up uh, by surgery, uh, which uh, will prevent injury to your junction, will prevent uh, worsening of your uh, ulceration near the thing. So if you see, these are the four uh, things. The top uh, left-hand corner is a normal. Then you have three types of uh, wrapping we do. After pulling down the stomach, we wrap. And uh, we do all these three uh, things for very tailor-made to the patient uh, that is there. So uh, depend on which type, then we do this kind of surgery. So majority of us who have reflux, no need surgery. So don't be worried. Don't go and ask your surgeon, please go and wrap my stomach. Don't wrap my stomach. No. Okay. The treatment for uh, reflux, uh, Majority is lifestyle management uh, combined with um, medication. And uh, with that, more than 80% of us will live uh, successfully. Only those who cannot be controlled with medicine, you have a very bad reflux and you have ulcers like uh, how I showed. Let's see whether... Um, yes. Yes, where the thing goes. Okay. Yes. So like this, uh, it's not bad. So if you have a very bad uh, refluxes, so this is uh, how we wrap. Uh, this is a real life uh, picture of one of the patients I did, uh, I think last month. Uh, you can see the stomach is wrapped and this is a toupee. Uh, one of the things, the stomach is wrapped around the esophagus to prevent acid reflux. So this is what can be done in the extreme cases and uh, uh, and so, so um, next is, um, will chili seed cause appendicitis? What are your thoughts? Write to me. Yes, let me read. Uh, 
Okay, so um, this is uh, what I call a meat. Okay, so chili seed does not cause uh, appendix. Um, in fact, many of my patients also ask whether the chili can cause diarrhea, chili causes uh, ulcers, yes. Um, chili actually cause, uh, have a lot of uh, chemical, uh, you must understand. Uh, if you look at uh, the name uh, capsaicin, it's actually a chemical in chili uh, and we call capsium uh, the, the name. But the chemical name is capsaicin, which is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it's, a eight, it's a methyl vinyl nanoamine. Uh, the numbers, you can go and check it out. So these chemicals is an irritant uh, to our layers. So it can cause uh, issues, but chili don't cause a prolonged gastric problem. That means when you eat, that moment of time, the chemical reaction give you that like little bit of a stinging sensation, pain, pricking a bit, but it won't be lasting for a few days. If it lasts for a few days, then you cannot tell this due to chili. Uh, some people say uh, after eating chili, I get diarrhea. That is a different component. You are maybe hyperactive and, and uh, these chili chemicals causing the problem. So uh, this is a myth. Don't worry. In Malaysia, I don't think you can avoid eating chili. Right or not, guys? Every day we eat chili. So to go without chili, it'd be a big problem. And uh, keep on pressing the likes. I can see a lot of likes like. So looks like that girl on the other side, Xiao going to ask me to present again next week. And then um, what is the next myth? Bathing after meal can cause perot bunche. This is a myth by a lot of mothers. Huh? Um, don't go and bathe immediately after uh, uh, what they call uh, eating. Uh, your stomach will become bigger. And then another thing they'll tell is uh, eating. Uh, then after immediately go and sleep, you become a balloon size, like a Michelin man like that. Okay. So all this, uh, let me find, let me find the card. All this, uh, meat. All right. So don't believe it. Unless you eat and sleep, that's the only thing you do for your life. Then of course, you'll be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. But uh, it does not uh, cause uh, obesity. And uh, of course, you need to do activities other than just these two things, sleeping and eating, which is happening now in MCO. Uh, both my sons are doing that, but uh, they're not gaining weight. Uh, so um, this is a myth. But what can happen is uh, it can cause reflux problem. If you have very bad hiatus, if you lie down, you can cause problem, but uh, basically it's not true. And uh, again, uh, this is a like form. Let me put in for any other questions. Uh, any questions? Uh, fruits like jackfruit, bean, cucumber, uh, drink coffee tea might cause onion. It's a fact of meat. Yes, this is uh, interesting. All right. So, um, cause onion. This is a fact because many of these, uh, we don't realize, uh, uh, even um, uh, for instance, carrot uh, has higher acidity compared to uh, coffee. Uh, but uh, we all eat carrot, but we forget that we also drink coffee. So, it all depends on. Um, the type of fruit, uh, type of vegetable you drink, all of this can cause uh, irritants, uh, which is uh, temporary, and uh, it, it, it settles after one or two days. But when it's persistent, you need to know why. Is you, are you having a, a defect which causes it to be worse, or are you uh, uh, having this uh, issue because of something else you are taking as well? So that's the reason when patient comes, or you go to a doctor, please bring all your medicines, everything, even including your supplement. Do you know some of the patients take one set? When I ask, do you take medicine? They say this is a medicine they take, but uh, they forget that they take a lot of supplements, which is not told to me. So when I read back uh, in the supplement, some of the supplements are the one causing the problem, uh, not only the medicine. So be careful. Uh, this may be very valuable. Uh, thank you, Fazlan, for the question. Um, why do I get stomach ache after waking up? That's an interesting question. Uh, okay, he said that uh, 
I have a hole in the stomach on the last time, even though I have paid for it. Okay, I think the H polyra is a big topic. I'm going to stick that topic for the next talk. Huh? The cancer is for the next talk so that we can talk more and more. And then, um, um, any other question which I haven't answered, or we go to the next. Do I have any more slides? Oh, what is this? Eating me and coffee. Yeah, this one we answered. So, um, yes, uh, nowadays when we eat me, uh, I'm also worried whether we are looking at the me content or the making of the me, which is uh, the yellow me, which is a wash with uh, acidic before um, in the camp commercially. Then you have the rice me, rice noodle me, white color, which have lack of chemicals. So all these things is a uh, irritant to your lining. So be careful. Uh, drinking that um, while watching poor stomach pain. Anything? There's too many questions, but uh, is surgery recommended for a good patient? I think uh, I answered it. I answered the question. And um, what medicine should I take uh, if I'm bloated stomach or as acid flux? So. Um, bloated stomach and acid reflux, you have to be careful, okay? Most commonly, I think we can treat it with uh, antacids and uh, what they call proton pump emitter, which reduces the acidity of your stomach. But bloatedness can be due to other things, uh, like uh, gallbladder stone, okay? Um, fatty liver can be cause bloatedness. So you be uh, careful, especially if you are overweight, uh, if you have high cholesterol level, or you eat uh, food, which is a uh, um, specific food like pucho, paku, all this petai, jering, these kind of things uh, can induce uh, gallstones. And that's why we see more patients from um, uh, Kolapila, Jelebu, they have bigger stones uh, compared to uh, this side of Sramban where we have cholesterol stones. And um, Vigorous. Yeah, I'm trying to read some of the questions uh, here. Can spicy food cause gastric? I answered that. Uh, most of the time I suffer at night. Okay, this all answered. So uh, not eating on time lead to stomach ulcer. Is that true? Uh, because uh, our mothers usually uh, uh, blackmail the kids. No, you don't eat on time. Uh, you're going to get stomach ulcer. Uh, you eat on time, uh, then only you will be healthy. So if you look at this, uh, I would say this is a myth. Uh, um, if you, then I should have had stomach ulcers uh, maybe long time ago because uh, as a surgeon, we hardly eat on time and then uh, don't cause. So what is it, the truth in this? Um, of course, when you don't eat on time, you don't have gastric juice hot and uh, causing you to have hunger pain. Uh, but the, the juice is, uh, does not cause uh, ulcer because our stomach have protective layers uh, 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 which uh, protect your stomach against this acid. So it does not. And at the same time, when you don't eat over time, you don't produce uh, the acid enough. And only when you have the smell of the food and uh, when you uh, put the, mouth, uh, the food in your mouth, then you trigger the acidity of the thing. Okay. So I think one of them asked um, intermittent fasting. Wow, this is a trigger. This is a big topic. I think intermittent fasting is a topic by itself. Uh, Xiao, keep it. Uh, I think we'll talk about intermittent fasting with Xiao because she is expert in it as well. Uh, does stress stimulate reflux? I think Johan is uh, reading a lot of things. Uh, Johan, you are asking killer questions. So I'm going to give you two hands up. Okay, so uh, that stress uh, induces uh, reflux. Yes, what happens? Stress induces uh, increase in acid production. Um, so that's why when you have stress, stress won't cause gastritis. This term gastritis again, huh? I'm telling you, if in a medical field, it's just an inflammation of the stomach lining, which is inside here, inside here, uh, inflammation of the inner layer which is usually seen in an endoscopy or when we put in the microscope, you can see the inflammation. But usually when we say stress, 
won't cause this inflammation because stress does increase your acid production. So when that's why when you are depressed, when you are stressed, you're going to have one or two times of pricking pain, like how we get after eating chili. Then you say, wow. Okay, that's all. It won't be like gastritis where the whole thing is inflamed. It's going to be painful for days. That is something else. Of course, the severe stress, uh, when you happen, like say, when you have an uh, accident, when you have burn, uh, you injured your body, that is a uh, stress to the body. That's called metabolic stress. That kind of things can cause bad ulcers. That is different. Uh, normal stress here won't cause. The stress to the body, which cause a lot of uh, other problems in your body, and also uh, when you have accident, your blood pressure comes down, your blood supply to the inner layer reduces, so immediately it cracks and uh, ulcers. So that's called stress ulcer. So don't uh, think that the doctors, when they talk about stress ulcer and uh, the stress-induced ulcers, is the same as uh, we are telling, I have stress, so I'm going to develop a lot of ulcers. No. Okay. I hope it's answered you, Johan. Uh, you owe me on Teta Red. And uh, anybody else uh, want to ask? Uh, chili seeds makes appendix. Uh, we replied already. Chili seeds do not uh, uh, give you appendicitis. It's uh, meat. You can eat all the chili you want. I think we should can do a online chili eating competition and see who gets the appendicitis. I'm sure we won't get um, that the pathology is not there. Um, Somebody asked, uh, alkaline water. Wow, Louis J Jason. Jason, does drinking alkaline water, this is a sensitive question. So let me think how to answer. So alkaline water causes uh, any help in the thing. Uh, it's a very uh, personal opinion uh, for me. It's a personal opinion. Uh, our body uh, pH is uh, stabilized at uh, 7.35 to 7.45. This is the... Uh, thing they stabilize it. If our body uh, in infection, sometimes we develop a lot of acid. Your our body has a buffer system which pushes this uh, pH into this particular narrow margin of thing. We have buffer system. Uh, we have uh, four buffer system in our body to maintain this thing. So great, God is great. Uh, so if if you increase the pH the thing will bring it down. You reduce the pH, our body will bring it up uh, to that. So it is uh, so, so uh, interesting how our body manages the acidity. So your kidney will, will wash out excess acid or captures the excess acid. So it's very complex. So when you put alkaline water, uh, if you think about alkaline, uh, I'm, the alkaline water is not so alkaline. I'm talking about if you look at the alkaline uh, injuries uh, for burn, um, it's worse than acid injury, okay? But alkaline water uh, does not going to cause anything to your pH because your body will maintain that pH. And then nothing going to happen to your pH. It's not going to be less acid or more acid because never is a myth. Your body pH is fixed between this number 7.35 to 7.45. Please go and check it. You can test it uh, many times. It's not going to increase. This is just miracle. And um, what else? Um, those who are asking it, please, you can ask in Basa also. Uh, maybe one day I do in Basa, another day I do in Tamil, and another day I do in Chinese, or you know, Chinese with the translator. Um, because, um, yes, uh, yes, Mr. Pandi Devan. Uh, durian and pineapple, buah yang panas. Okay, Kalida is asking again. Of course, this is a uh, kitty fruit, they say. Uh, a lot of indigestion caused by it. Can dal cause uh, Ananda Valdi? Ask, dal cause gastric pain. So, when this is another thing, when we look into Google and say, what are the food causes reflux? What are the food I should avoid? They'll tell you avoid uh, what they call capsicum, you avoid uh, wine, you avoid lemon juice, all the Western food they tell, but the Malaysian food they won't tell. Okay? Malaysian food won't tell. So what happens? 
Dal does uh, uh, causes uh, gassiness. Uh, just I I seen patients who eat dal have a very bad reflux. Uh, it causes a lot of bloatedness. So um, those who have these issues with dal and those who have those uh, hiatus, those who have reflux, and uh, uh, if you cut down uh, or change the type of dal, I seen patients uh, say that much better now by changing the type of dal and changing, cutting down the dal curry. Uh, so uh, Malaysian food, we have to do a lot of experiment. I don't mind being the experiment. I love dal. Uh, I have reflux, but uh, sometimes I just, uh, too much of temptations. I just take the dal and then think about the reflux later. So don't worry about it, okay? A little bit of reflux is happens to every one of us. If any one of you said, I never get stomach pain, huh? Uh, it's not true. So uh, it's already 9.14. Uh, uh, let me see whether Xiao going to... Uh, any other question? Dal, meat of his wife. Um, gallstones cause bloatedness. Yes. Um, any other questions? My assistant. Anybody want to see my assistant? No. Uh, huh? Quick re-interruption. A yes. few uh, of the uh, uh, audience, they say you skip questions. You mind to skip? Oh, I can't it? because we went so fast here. Uh, okay. Uh, As one uh, asked, does drinking warm water helps to suit? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I think that's a controversial question. What is that? Drink it? Yes. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, it's really is coming very fast. Wait, I, I lost the questions. Does drinking warm waters helps? Help what? Help oh, with, you know, heartburn or gastric pain. Because I tell you, doctor, in, uh, especially Chinese culture, whatever mm. sickness you have, drink warm water. And also, it reminds us of, you know, a certain, or which we're not going to talk about. I think we'll say, drink warm water. <laughs> okay, and there's no evidence uh, uh, regarding this warm water uh, giving relief of uh, reflux symptoms. I'm not going to talk about uh, other things. But um, what it does is... It, it, it actually is a uh, vasodilators. When you drink warm water, it gives a soothing effect in your throat. Uh, compared to when you drink cold water, uh, it gives very um, cold, uh, causes uh, constriction. So um, that's the reason that um, when you drink warm water, it gives you the warm sensation going down. I don't know whether it affects the vagal tone or not, but uh, it doesn't... Uh, changes the uh, reflux symptom. However, drinking a lot of water sometimes dilutes uh, the acidity. Yes, but how much water you want to drink, right or not, to cause mm. it to go down. Because the pH is so low, uh, you might have to drink tons of water to dilute it. So um, yes, drinking water is good, warm water uh, or cold water. So I follow uh, my mother's advice, drink warm water. You have to follow your mother's advice, drink warm water. So sometimes these are left unanswered, uh, be better. But uh, it's soothing effect. Eh? Nothing more, nothing less. No, there's no evidence on it. Okay. Doctor, now it's a 9.18. I think you have a lot of questions uh, still. Maybe you yeah. can take another three more questions. Last three. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, Simon is uh, talking to Johan, but Simon haven't asked me any questions. Simon, ask some questions. Um... I can't see some of the questions. Is there anything that I miss? Uh, anything I miss? Okay, uh, Mohamad Kamarudin. Uh, this is a very important question. Let's focus on it. I heard heartburn sometimes feels like a heart attack. Yes. Please, uh, when you have a... Um, Heartburn, okay? Uh, it can mimic uh, even the symptoms like this. Uh, uh, when you have heartburn, when you're holding the chest, uh, it can 
be a heart attack. And one of the differential diagnoses of a heartburn is a heart attack. So please be careful that the, uh, the chest pain uh, from a heart attack and heartburn uh, can be almost similar. Okay, so my, my advice is rule out heart attack first. Uh, and then um, make sure ECG is done. I have many patients who had chest pain, uh, heartburn. When we do an ECG, when we do a cardiac enzyme, it's a heart attack, not a reflux, not a stomach pain. So uh, Mr. Kamarudin is ex, uh, right on the dot and it's very, very true that uh, we need to make sure we rule out heart attack. But the pain of heart attack can be uh, different. Uh, uh, some patients, they say it's like an elephant uh, sending on my chest, uh, that kind of sensation. And then um, they say the radiation to the left arm, uh, radiation to the upper part of the neck. All these are typical symptoms, but many of us may not have all. Uh, just sweating uh, without anything also can be heart attack. And especially diabetic patients, their symptoms are more masked. It can be just a uh, discomfort here in the abdomen and they are having an inferior heart attack or something like that. So be careful uh, when we, uh, when especially a patient or you uh, having a, something like a chest burn and when you, you are 40 plus, uh, nowadays everybody gets heart attack. So if you are 40 plus having this kind of symptom, uh, careful of self-medication. Uh, I, I always advise better do an ECG rule out uh, heart attack and then uh, come to um, gastroenterologists or upper GI surgeons or any other doctors for um, treatment for reflux. Um, I don't know why it looked quit. Any other question uh, I missed, uh, Xiao? I think I have two more, right? You told me three. So I'll, uh... yeah, you have two more. You have missed a lot of questions, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I'm but you have here, so many I'm questions. Like, yes, uh, it's my first time, so excuse me. So the next one, <laughs> we better. Uh... No, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, thanks to everyone for the good response. So I, ha I think I have to get Dr. Maha to join us again, uh, very, very soon, so that he can answer more questions. So let me just see. Right, I try to pick those that are related to our topic today. Mm. Okay. This, oh, wow. So many. Mm. Does ginger tea help with dyspepsia? Ginger tea. It is a warm water effect. Uh, I would say no, no evidence on it. Ginger tea. Same as the warm water. Lah. Yes. Okay. Uh, doctor, can gastric cause excessive burping and chest pain? Can uh, gastric cause? Yes, um, burping is uh, one of the dyspepsia category. So any where you have a discomfort in the abdomen, whether it's a uh, burping uh, excessively, mm -hmm. uh, it can be um, symptoms of reflux. Uh, that means you have a losing legs of uh, the junction, which we mentioned here. Uh, uh, is it upside down? Okay, no, correct. So here. So it can be that, um, but uh, you need to be uh, checked as well. Uh, this mm -hmm. is a burping and belching. Uh, it's a very tricky, complex, and put the doctor into a lot of spin-offs because to go and investigate it, uh, we have to go round and round. But they are uh, patients with uh, belching alone uh, can be treated, uh, burping alone. They are something that we can find, but... Uh, Little bit of burping is common. Everybody burps, but excessive burping is something else. Okay. Okay. okay thank you, doctor. doctor. I think I found a quite a relevant one. Uh, what do you suggest someone above fifty? Do you recommend them uh, to do regular checkup? Because, like, uh, I think in UK, any for especially for male, if they are above uh, fifty-five, they will get a uh, scope check. Uh, with the NHS for free, but uh, but what is your insight about this? Okay, so uh, if you look at uh, NHS, uh, they call uh, um, open access endoscopy. This is uh, in uh, Japan. If you look at historically, 
in Japan in 1950s. Uh, I'm trained in Japan. Uh, thanks to many of my knowledge, I, I grateful to some of my sensei from there, Professor Haruma, Professor Kamada, uh, who's uh, maybe watching as well. So um, um, they they had a lot of patients who were dying of stomach cancer. So in and they did mass screening. So everybody uh, screened uh, endoscopically, just like how we are screening for COVID, and they were screening for uh, stomach cancer. And uh, there are many methods of screening. One, they just give a drink of a uh, barium drink last time and just take an X-ray after turning the patient, and they do it in a uh, primary care. And if they find something, they send for scope. And later on, with the uh, advances of technology, the scope is available. Everybody is uh, scoped. In the uh, UK, where the incidence of stomach cancer is not so high, huh? so we cannot be screening everyone. It's uh, not cost effective. So in, uh, I think Birmingham, Leeds, all these places were initially started a targeted screening. Um, they screen only symptomatic patients. Those who have symptoms, uh, age more than 55, they do scopes. Okay? Mm -hmm. they, they actually got a, a lot of uh, early cancers in, uh, uh, in uh, Birmingham, Leeds. But that took them more than 10 years. Uh, in Malaysia, uh, I started the targeted screening. If you look in uh, Google, type my name and put Mark Squadron, uh, just type in Google, Maha Devan, and then Mark Squadron. This is a targeted uh, screening tool that we use in Malaysia. Uh, is, uh, and uh, we started in uh, Negeri Sembilan, and we won an international award for symptom-based screening, and also cited by the Japanese guy. Uh, so in that tool, I, I, I mentioned that we can use the tool to target certain patients. So one of the thing is, age, uh, more than uh, 50 with symptoms, uh, it's a high risk. Uh, if you're having, if you're more than 50 years old and then you're having a persistent pain in the stomach, all right, more than two weeks, then I think you need a scope rather than the white bottle of uh, medicine you're taking, okay? Because you never know, you may have something. If you have nothing, then it's fine. For next three to five years, you may not need anything. But uh, there are other uh, things, uh, which is a related uh, symptoms, uh, but that is cancer topic. I told Xiao, uh, the stomach cancer is a big topic, uh, targeted screening, so we'll do it next uh, for that. But there's one interesting um, question they asked, somebody asked about Barrett's esophagus and cancer. Uh, this is the uh, one I told, the junction here, uh, when we get injured with acid, uh, the junction of the stomach, and uh, the cells start changing, um, let me take out this one. When the, when the cells start changing and um, it goes through uh, changes uh, from normal, then it goes up one step, goes up one step, goes up one step. Say uh, at the end of it is the cancer. Uh, Barrett's esophagus is somewhere uh, midpoint or just past the midpoint. So it can progress to become cancer if you don't control your reflux. That's the reason many of us um, want to make sure the reflux is not so bad and do um, some surgery or what to prevent it. If you are bad, your risk goes up slightly uh, if, uh, to maybe 0.2% uh, uh, higher uh, to develop cancer. But uh, there are patients uh, we, we monitor, uh, patients with bad, whether with dysplasia, that means the cell have changed further on with uh, mild dysplasia, moderate dysplasia, severe dysplasia, then become cancer. So if we can see where they are, then we know how to treat them. There's a guideline for it, how we do the screening. So Barrett's esophagus is something we need to look out for. We, uh, if you have Barrett's, then you need to be uh, carefully uh, checked and put on this uh, uh, surveillance if possible, if you have dysplasia and all this. Okay, I hope um, it is... Uh, is there anything else? Thank you, Dr. Maha. Can you repeat again? Uh, you say, what, what, what do we type in Google? Maha and M A. Mark, Mark Squadron, M A R K, Mark Squadron. M A R K. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you missed it, it's uh, Dr. Maha, M A R K, Mark Squadron. Yes, Squadron. Q. Q U A D R A N. 
Okay. All right. So, uh, thank you, Dr. Maha. So, we have spent, wow, like one hour with uh, our... Time viewers. flies, time flies. I, I know, love I it. Know. I don't mind doing it again, guys. And I, yeah. That's a nice way to spend a Friday night instead of outside. Uh, <laughs> see you all. Uh, keep liking our pages. Keep liking our... Um, this uh, heart shape, heart shape, heart shape. I, I think this is a millennial thing, putting a heart shape. And heart shape. Loving it. Thank you, Xiao. Okay, thank you, Dr. Maha. So, guys, Bye. if you enjoyed it, please like and share our page. So, uh, Dr. Maha, I guess you cannot escape from me already. So, uh, I'm pretty sure you will be on our session very soon again. All right. Thank you, thank you. All right, then. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Dr. Maha, let's say bye-bye together. Bye-bye.